If you say, hey, I need a million dollars of new business next year to hit my 30% growth target, okay, then how many deals is that equal? A reverse funnel map would look something like this. Well, our average deal size is $100,000. Okay, then I need 10 deals. What's our close rate? Well, our close rate is 20%. Okay, then I need 50 deals in the funnel. And then what's our outreach to appointment rate? Well, it's 20%. Okay, so now I need 250 leads. That's the reverse funnel map. And then you would say, okay, well, capacity wise, you know, if I have a person working 40 hours a week, how many appointments can they set? And then you could figure out very quickly, mathematically, how many people that you would need. Then you would say, okay, so that determines a capacity plan. Then you would say, that tells me how many people I need. What type of people do I need? So if you look at top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, this comes down to, you know, what is your sale? So in our case, you know, because we're, we're selling inexpensive discretionary items to small business owners, you know, I don't need a $250,000 salesperson to make that happen. I need someone between fifty dollars and $100,000 to make that happen. Um, because we have a productized service. I mean, our sales methodology, all of you participated in it, is, is we believe in showing, not telling. So we'll invite you to a session. You'll get a feel for it yourself, who the other members are, and that does most of the selling for us. So that tells us what type of person we need. Once you figure out for yourself what type of person you need, then the comp data is pretty easy. You know, you could go to sites like salary.com and figure out what the comp ranges are in your geography for that, for that job level. And that would give you a budget. Now, with the budget, you then can say, okay, well, if I need three people at 100 grand a whack, that's 300,000. What is that as a percentage of revenue? How do I feel about that? The way that you stress test that number is the goals you're shooting for, and these might be the benchmarks that you're referring to, is you want an 80% gross margin and a 50% EBITDA margin. So where the sales cost comes out is between gross margin and EBITDA. So if you have an 80% gross margin, you're trying to get to a 50% EBITDA number, what comes out of the gross margin to get to EBITDA, two things, overhead, which is usually 5 to 10% in a boutique, and sales and marketing costs. So then you could back into maybe a 20% number, and that might be a way to reverse engineer.